guys, um, I'm in bed. I'm ready to go to sleep. But I just wanted to tell you what I did today. Um, I have moved officially um, my SB4000 SVS to the hallway. And as you can see, there's a cord stretched all the way from the Marantz. I had to move the Marantz amp over a little bit to give it some uh, leeway there because and I'm sorry for the quality it's you could barely see anything but you're gonna because there's gonna be a TV blasting in a minute and hope hopefully it, it's not that I my channel will get demonetized but it will it won't be available for everyone to see and um, I think this video makes I mean I see other people making videos of movies all the time and they don't get uh, flagged um, which bl fl frankly blows my mind um, this one home theater guy plays movies all the time and he'll show just the woofer um, but you still have the audio in the background and one guy showed the actual movie he showed interstellar and he kept going back and forth between this monolith 12 inch versus the uh, PB 3000 and the PB 3000 no doubt won. but the monolith looked way better I will admit and it's um, THX ultra certified but he said that it sort of would reach distortion levels if pushed to the limits of the SVS. So the SVS won versus the Monolith, but I would like to prefer, the, I think a true comparison would be the Monolith 15, if they have one. Um, because the 12 inch ain't gonna cut it, sorry. It's only, it's only 800 watts uh, RMS uh, versus like 1200 on the, or wait, I, honestly, I forget what the monolith. You, you guys can look it up. Um, all I know is that the SB4000 is, I believe, 1200. I want to say 1200 RMS. It's at all times 1200 watts. And somehow it has a headroom of over 4000 watts, which just blows my mind. This little boy over here, this 10 inch, is 300 watts, and I have no idea what the peak is. I assume the peak is about 600. So this thing now, even if I push it, it just, it, it can't keep up with this uh, SB4000 in any way, shape or form. It's 10 years plus old. Let's watch a little quick scene here. I don't know if you, how well you will hear the bass, um, but I might talk through the video just a little bit and I'll tell you when the bass hits the hardest. You want to notice when he, uh, there's serious space right now. Especially when, especially when the tanks start hitting them. So um, I can I tried to actually just continue the video and it just stopped out of nowhere. So I'm not sure what happened there exactly. Um, but what I did basically is after I readjusted the set, the main left and right speakers because once I moved the SVS, I had to move in the speaker over here because it looked it just bugged me. It was literally blocking the sub. So. Once I moved into the hallway, is what happens is that the sound waves got a good two feet now of travel distance versus literally being right there. And it's a long sub. So basically what you're looking at is something that somehow has doubled its performance. And I and I um I, I just want to stress that. Buying subs is very tricky, and if you have a small, perfectly square room, like this is more of a rectangular room. Um, as you can see, it's 
Um, this would be the longer side and it goes all the way over to there. And I set it up sadly um, without even thinking about it the shortest way possible which was not too much of an issue uh, with with a smaller sub like the 10. But when you're looking at a sub that's meant for large rooms, and this is where things get tricky, guys. If you have a small bedroom and you just want a nice home theater, I, I can't recommend this sub. It's, it's You might as well save your money. Now, and the reason for that is because it's so powerful that it's throwing the bass wavelengths past you. If you've ever been to a concert or any kind of like bar that's playing a live band, perfect example is if you're on the dance floor, you're getting hit with, um, you know, bass drum sounds and maybe the bass players, you know, blasting away. And then you go into the, let's say you go into the bathroom that's across the hall, you're gonna hear so much low end bass compared to the bass that you are feeling in the club, which is more hard hitting. So here's the weird thing. So I stood over the 10. I stood over it, played it. I could hear bass very well coming, but I think this both subs were on. So it was a little misleading. Then I walked over to the S, uh, SB4000. And I stood over it and I felt nothing. It's built so solid, it does not leak sound like whatsoever. So, if you have a large room like this, try to try your best to get this sub the furthest away possible, and then you will literally fall in love with it. It's just night and day difference. Um, I've been listening to music, um, just hearing incredible low end that you will never hear in a theater, never. I've been to IMAX, I've been to the, the best IMAX in the city of Fort Lauderdale, which is in the Museum of Science. And now the punch that you get from the 12 inches in that IMAX, yes, they blow you away. But they're not even, I, I believe that they're not even as capable as these woofers. If they had, as many if they have, if they had as many SVS subwoofers or equals, I know there's other companies out there. If they had 24 of these in a theater, I mean, I I, I can't even imagine the base. Some people have like two of these. Some people have like four of these. Um, I seen a guy that stacked uh, four on top of each other. Like that's rude. And, and it wasn't even and and he was close to it. So like, I don't see how that was effective at all in, in, in his setup. He had two, basically two right there, and then he had another two over here, and then his Klipsch set speakers were over here. Of course, my speakers are better than Klipsch um, at almost a grand, but just for two. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, he's going for some sort of like, decibel like a uh, record or something but like you're not he's not getting the true essence of what the sub is meant for it's meant for large rooms so someone back in the kitchen of his room probably is hearing so much goddamn bass they probably can't even stand it but if you're on the couch you're only getting what's you're only getting the frequencies that are close so you're only getting the hard hitting frequencies which um, a smaller sub supposedly would be better for if you want to hear, if you want to mix in um, a large sub like this and then you want to mix in a small sub um, f to hear, like say you're really close by. Um, like if I had um, a top of the line sun, you know, Sunfire Carver amp right there that practically bounces off the floor, um, you would hear more low end actually from that in that spot or even in that spot over there where the 10 is uh, than you would the SB4000. Now I don't know if the PB4000 would sound equally in that spot, but I still don't believe that it would sound quite as good in the hallway. I think the hallway is 
like the magic uh, section of this room. Um, the only way to truly test it is to drag that sub onto my bed where I watch movies. It's the only way to truly do it. Um, it's sort of called the, the the sub crawl, but I can't crawl on, I can't crawl under the bed. So in essence, guys, if your room is small, just to, I'll just come to a quick conclusion here. If your room is small, you do not need the SB4000 um, besides bragging rights or, or the 16. The 16 would be even more of a waste. You would probably be better off with a bunch of 12s or the, uh, or the 3000 series. Um, the ported ones for sure. Um, because those will extend the, the, the deep frequencies louder. Um, but I still, I still have reservations because I know that smaller subs like, um, my computer sub, for example, when you're playing a game, it's only two sixes. So the surface area equals like a 12, but it's not designed like a 12. It's a simple six and a half inch woofer times two and i hear the bass right next to it so like i'm right on top of it and the bass uh is really good for for what it is it was expensive at the time but you know it was the uh Altec lansing ada 995 i believe um very expensive at the time obviously i'm spoiled now by this system um and the svs uh doesn't even it's just it's effortless I did do something very let me show you what I did with my set oh I can't because I'm on the phone I did something with my settings guys um I let the Odyssey do its thing but I left it at negative seven and then I went into the uh, low frequency menu and I upped it to 4.0 and once I did that I don't hear any weird distortion um both subs kick ass I don't know why this is. Someone said that the Marantz um, signal runs hot. So at negative seven, it's not gonna run hot. And it's not quite the same as if it's at zero and then you take off the low frequency effects. Um, for whatever reason, it makes no sense. I've done the testing. Basically, I took negative seven and I added 4.5. I originally had it at 4.5, but since I've moved the subs and turned them up, I put them at four. At negative seven, add 4.5, that's what I did originally, and then I took off the low frequency effects. The bass was not even close to being the same. It felt like I had lost so much bass that I just immediately went right back to it. So I want you guys to try that if you can, and then let me know your results. Um, but that's my video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I'd love to get uh, the woofer moving for you guys on a couple of on a couple of movies. Probably Interstellar will be my next uh, movie. Um, that seems like a popular uh, test. Um, uh, Blade Runner, just the bass is just unbelievable. The whole, the, I, these walls are just vibrating at cer certain scenes like to the point where you're like, kind of like worried, like uh, your neighbors are gonna, you know, start knocking on your door. But I have my room sound treated, as you all know. So honestly, when I'm outside, I don't hear the bass. I hear more of the high end, I, but I don't hear the low end. I think the low end is kept inside this room. I don't even think my neighbors can hear it. I've never gotten that one complaint at night even from two o'clock in the morning all the way to seven o'clock in the morning. Never one complaint. And I, and I asked my neighbor, I was like, do you ever hear me playing movies at night? And she's like, nope. So I'm like, all good. But yes, yeah, she, yeah, she could always hear my car starting when I had the uh, WRX or Beamer. Always heard that though. But she never heard me blasting my system. All right guys, till next time, peace and uh, do some experimenting with your either Marantz or Denon receiver or the Odyssey system. Um, try my method of um, negative seven on the subs and then go into the low frequency uh, section and put like three, five, four, or four, five, depending on where you like to keep the volume. Um, I believe 
the lower the volume on the sub, the safer the sub is gonna be. This is only at 50%. Um, I don't know what negative 12 is compared to the uh, 10 inch. Um, I'm assuming 10 is like loud. Um, zero is maxed. So you gotta think like, it's about 80, I wanna say 80, it's at like 88% volume. That's my guess. Whereas this is at 50% volume. Now if I turn, I've never once turned that amp on the 10 to past 50% because it's ported so it's louder but that's sealed so it can go louder it can be pushed it works differently um, the woofer fights itself it's there's a certain mechanics that sealed subs do that um, um, ported subs don't do whereas uh, apparently uh, a sealed sub has less distortion. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Hope you had some fun.